Right, OK. So what we've done is we're just going to finish off our primary correction stage now. We've done the, the luminance or set the exposure and we've added saturation using the RGB mixer and our vector scope. If we completely toggle off all the nodes, that's where we started and this is where we currently are. So last but no means least is we need to make sure that this is color balanced, that all our neutral whites, blacks and grays are being accurately reproduced and don't have any cross talk or uh, don't have any kind of um, colors intercepting those neutral values. We're not trying to make this orange gray or white. We're not trying to make this yellow a different color. What we're trying to do is just simply focus on our neutral colors, our blacks, our grays and our whites to make sure that they have no color um, kind of leaking in there. In essence, we're doing the white and the black balance that a camera would do. So let's add another serial node. Let's right click and change its label. And call this primary balance. Okay. And this one, we're going to use a couple of different scopes. Now, if we were to look at our waveform, and switch the Y off so we can see all our colors in our waveform as well. What we should be seeing is in the neutral areas, the blacks, for example, we, should be, we shouldn't see varying levels of these colors. We should see the colors mixing together to create pure white or pure neutral light. Yeah, because as we know, white light is made up of all the different colors of the spectrum melded together to create a pure white light. So actually switching the luminance off in this respect helps just indicate that we might have a few issues here. So if we look at the black of this monitor, it's not quite pure white, it's not quite neutral. The same thing here. Now we could try and instinctively come in here back to our color wheels or our primary bars and try and correct this by just looking at it. So if we look, just work with our lift, our shadow areas, we can see that red possibly needs to come up. So I've got a bit of lag because I'm recording this tutorial. There we go. And then maybe blue needs to come down. And you'll notice if we were to disable this, that's before, that's after. We've got a lot more white light in here. So if we were to look at our parade, for example, turn Y off, and use our mask tool again to isolate something that we think is black. So let's bring in any feather we might have say here, anything we know to be a neutral value, and shift H like we did with our exposure, and let me command D to turn off that node. Actually, let's reset the lift value. You can see that's how it looked before, but we instinctively brought our red up, and we're looking for the bottom this trace to, to match the very tips of these at the bottom to be in line and bring our blue up as well and you'll find that they probably match just as well as if we'd looked in our waveform to do it and again so we can use different scopes yield different results. So let's shift H to get off highlight mode and turn the mask off. And actually if we disable this before after and you can see we've got rid of a yellow tint on the skin tones. But the problem is often we haven't got something 
always that's black and white to use as a reference. Um, we know these posters to be white, okay? But they're somewhat out of focus. So what you'll notice is you scrub through this shot. I asked Sam to hold up this white lasso light reference chip chart. And the reasons for it are to help with this process. So it gives us a guaranteed black, white, and on the reverse, a gray value. So what we could do now is just double check how close we were. Let's get our little black mask and bring it to something. Ooh. Let's zoom back out and manage to expand it way off screen. Let's just in fact, delete that mask. Let's put a square in. And let's just put it around something we know to be black. So let's just drag all the points. And we've got this black section. If we zoom in, we just want to make sure that we've just got our black values in there. Also, the bigger the section, the better. But we know we've got black in there, and that should be black. Shift H. We see actually, it's not looking too bad. Parade, very tips of these, looking about right. In fact, we probably could just lift our red. Maybe those screens weren't as black as we thought. So again, it's good to have an empirical reference our blue up and just balance the whole thing out using our separate lift control so we're just working with the shadows so if we look at our waveform now yeah if we go before and we can see we've got a lot more white in that area. So let's turn that off, shift H, and let's disable and on, okay? Now the next thing to do is check on a white value. We could have started with the white, but we started with black. So again, you could look at the very tips, and something that we know to be white is this reference card here but there doesn't seem to be much white going on there. So again, our instincts in the gain might be to if we stretch out these sometimes, just for the purpose of doing this, you can see those colors stretching apart even more so. So sometimes I like to just boost the overall gain and then reset that back to zero on the Y, just so I can see the mismatch. If I try and line those up, then I've got a lot more white light there. I can look at my parade, and you can see that those that white point is pretty much balanced up. It might be that the green. There we go. So if we shift, so in fact, to go back to our waveform, we've got a lot of white light there. Our black since we've boosted our gain so if we boot stretch that down again sometimes just stretching this contrast in the Y's not the colors will kind of accentuate problems okay so it might be that we want to pull that in again you can see we've got this very solid white values in our luminance our parade is looking a lot more balanced in these key sections look here as well and our mid-tones are not looking far off either. So we could pull up the grey that we know to be a neutral grey. And we can see that big grey section here, look, and see that they're all level two. So what that's helped us to do is make sure we've got more neutral values where these colour channels are accurately being combined. Command D, look, you can see how there was very little white in the image. If we re-enable it, we're back to a properly 
saturated image. And what we can do now is just reset these luminance values that we brought up for the overall luminance back to their default. One and zero. So we're back to the exposure control we had, but by boosting it, we saw where our problem areas were with our saturation, our color balance. It allowed us to correct them by boosting these. Now, because we've been working with this color balance and bringing certain levels up and down, it is good now to go back to our primary luma adjustment and double check we're still happy. So I'm just gonna go back to my Y and just check that these things are still where we want them to be. And I feel like our luminance has suffered a little bit. So I would bring up our overall gain on our exposure control and I'd bring our lift, possibly just down a nudge and let's just check our skin tone. And we can see that that is sitting roughly where we want it to be. So if we disable the whole thing, that is before, that is after, before, after. And if we toggle off our balance on and off, you can see how yellowy green it was before. And now we seem to have a good, well delineated skin tone from reds, from yellows to oranges. If we come to our vector scope, you can see that our center of our trace is, uh, is more over to the center of the target. If we command D, you can see how far off it was veering to the yellow and the green. This hot center of the trace should be sitting on this middle where it's accurate. If we re-enable it, you can see it's back where it should be. So basically we're trusting our scopes to give us accurate and desirable exposure and luminance, accurate saturation, then importantly, accurate color balance. So we've con we've now completed our primary correction, then ready to add any look and any maybe isolation if we want it to our image to give it a theme or a, a, a genre, okay? But it's important that you start with this accurate, clear, concise primary stage. All right, thank you very much.